Stayallday.com. You're now tuned into the show where you learn the discipline to show up day after day to do the work, the confidence to put yourself out there boldly and authentically, and the mental toughness to continue showing up, doing the work, putting yourself out there, even when the success you've expected to achieve has yet to be achieved. And on top of all this, you get a huge dose of personal initiative. That is the go-getter energy that moves any one of us, including yourself, to go and make things happen instead of waiting for things to happen. And then we put all this together into a series of frameworks, approaches, insights, strategies, and techniques all underneath the umbrella of one unifying philosophy that is called Work on Your Game. My name is Dre Baldwin, also known as Dre All Day, and welcome to the show. And today's topic is why you need insight and not information. Before we get into this, let me remind everybody of two things. Number one, my daily motivation text and Monday motivation text. We draw every day and every week, respectively. Guaranteed to have you focus sharp and on point, both of them. And you can get them by being part of my text community. It is free to join. My number is 305-384-6894. Send a text to that number and you'll be a member of the community. As soon as we start sending those texts again right now, they are, as of this recording, they're not sending working on some back-end tech issues. But as soon as we start sending those again, you'll be getting those messages straight to your phone as soon as we start again. So just text me now so you have it taken care of. Secondly, work on your game university. You want to have me as your coach. Work with people from all different backgrounds, different businesses, different areas. Why? Because my superpower is not a specific industry. My superpower is insight, ability to look at a situation, break it down, put it back together. And insight is what we're going to talk about here today. So I'm going to explain to you the value of insight here in today's episode. This is my specialty. It is what I do best. And that's why whether you work in the health space, whether you work in the uh, dental space, whether you work in the automotive space, whether you are in sales, whether you are a coach, whether you are an author, whether you are just trying to figure things out, whether you work in finance, whether you have a brick and mortar business that is mostly offline, or you have a business that is completely online, or you are not quite sure what you have right now, but you're trying to do something. I can work with you. Why? Because insight is transferable across all industries. And again, today's episode is going to explain that. Go to work on your game university.com. You can learn more about what we're doing, how we're doing it, and how you can get involved. That out the way, let's get into the topic here today, which is, again, why you need insight and not information. Now, I talked about insight extensively in episode number 1177, and I explained that insight is the key to going from the 1x level to the 10x level in whatever you are doing. Again, it doesn't matter what it is. You want to go from 1x to 10x as an athlete. You want to do it as an entrepreneur. You want to do it in your career. You're climbing a ladder in the corporate world, for example. All of these require the exact same thing, which is insight. And again, listen to episode 1177. You can learn more about just the overall uh, understanding of insight as a concept and is the most important thing that people need for advancement in life and in business. So today, what I'm going to do is juxtapose insight with the thing that most people go looking for, which is not insight. The thing most people go looking for is information. And again, most people think that's what they need, but it's actually not what you need. And today I'm going to explain to you why it's not what you need. Point number one. Today's topic, once again, is why you need insight and not information. Number one, information is free, ubiquitous, and easily accessible by everybody. So how can you need something that is free, ubiquitous, and easily accessible? You don't need it. You already got it. Who here thinks they need information? Most of you do not need information. You might think you need information, but you don't need information. You get information on Google, which everyone who's listening to me, to listen to this, you have to have some type of access to uh, the internet, which means you got a data plan or you got Wi-Fi or both. Google, everybody knows about it, right? YouTube, is anybody unfamiliar with their website? AI software, most of you know about that and have used it at least once. And at the highest cost, you can buy a book on Amazon for $20. I mean, that's probably the highest cost of information these days is the cost of a book for 20, maybe 30 bucks hardcover. So since all this information is so easily accessible, and I just proved it to you, why do people still have challenges and problems and unsolved mysteries in their businesses and in their lives? Let me ask that question again. Somebody has to answer this. Somebody got to help me out and help me figure this out. Since all this information is so easily accessible and virtually free, why do people still have challenges, problems, and unsolved mysteries in their businesses and in their lives? Because clearly, we all have access to as much information as we want, more information than we even have time to consume. So why do people still have problems? Why do people still have challenges? Why do people still have things going on that they don't even know what's going on? They wouldn't know how to fix it even if they knew about it. You got all the information. All the information is there. So why do people still have problems? See, the point is information is not the solution to the problem. That is a trick question because information is not the solution. Because if information was the solution, then there'd be no problems in the entire world of anyone who has access to the Internet or data because we all have access to all the information we could possibly want. So none of us who has access to information 
In other words, if you own a smartphone, you should not have a problem that has anything to do with a lack of information. That makes no sense whatsoever. You have information literally at your fingertips all day for free. What's your excuse? And the reason is information is not the solution to your problem. See, you don't actually have to have an excuse because you don't need information. But all of you thinking that you need information, you don't need information. And this is what we call an inaccurate formula. If you think you need one thing, but you actually need another thing, but you don't understand what you're missing, then you're going to keep working on the wrong thing. No matter, even if you get it right, you still end up in the wrong spot. This is what happens to a lot of people. Because if all we needed was information, there'd be no problems in the, again, the internet connected world, we wouldn't have problems. Maybe people who don't have access to information like us, maybe they would have problems, but you and I, no. You will notice that in today's world, even with all this access to information, there are more people with more problems than any other time in history. All this information we have, more people have more problems than they had 30 years ago, 60 years ago, 80 years ago. How is that possible when we got all this information? How does more information make things worse? How is that possible? Because information is not the solution to a problem. Information is not the solution to a problem. I talked about this in episode 2002, how we have more information and are dumber than ever. Human beings are dumber than we have ever been, even though we have more access to more information than in any time in history. Because we don't need information. The solution to a problem, folks, could be the application of information. But the challenge with that is that there is too much information out there to discern which information needs to be applied. When should you apply it? Where do you apply it? Why and how do you apply it? See, these questions can't be answered by the information itself. So do you see how problems can actually multiply the more information you get? You see, every piece of information you get now, okay, you got the information, but now somebody has to tell you or you have to figure out which information should I use? Because a book has 300, 500, 1,000 pages worth of information. Which information should I use? When do I use it? Where do I use it? Why do I use it? How do I use it? If you can't answer those questions, the information itself actually complicates things rather than making things more simple. This is the reason why I started creating programs for athletes back in the day, because I put out a lot of information, so to speak, about how to practice basketball. The problem was the players were like, well, I don't know how and when and where to apply all this information you're giving me, Dre. Can you help me make sense of this? I said, yes, I can. I started charging them for it. I called those programs, and that's how I got into business. If you're reading between the lines, this gave you a business idea right there. So problems multiply with the more information you get. This is the reason why when people go searching for information, they often end up more confused than they end up informed. I was just talking to someone today who had this exact problem. She owns her own business. It's in the, we'll just call it the health space, the health and beauty space. And her challenge is she's worked with a lot of people who have given her a lot of information. The challenge is the more information she's gotten, the more confused she has grown because she isn't sure which information to apply, when, where, and how. And when two people's information start to conflict with each other, she doesn't know which one should win. And this is what happened to a lot of you as well. You end up more confused than you are informed, even though you have more information today than you had yesterday. So when someone tries to criticize you by saying, for example, you are misinformed, I get this on social media when I'm engaging with people on X, also known as Twitter, I'll say something, people say, well, you're misinformed. Uh, that's not actually a critique. Telling someone that they're misinformed is not a critique because getting informed is not what most people need anyway. So getting informed does not actually make you smarter. It doesn't make you better. Because again, all of us have more information today than people had 100 years ago. Each one of us, the dumbest person listening to this episode, if we rank all of us by a level of intelligence. Whoever is the lowest on the totem pole, you have more information than a person had in their entire lifetime 100 years ago. So information is not our problem. Information is not what most people need. So when someone tells you that you're misinformed, doesn't actually mean anything. That, that person, they're the one who's actually the fool because they think being informed is some type of accomplishment. Being informed is not an accomplishment because all of us are very, very informed, but all of us are still, many of us are still dumb and many of us are still stupid. Now I'll explain to you how we solve this as we move on. Point number two, today's topic, once again, is why you need insight and not information. Number two, insight is about the interpretation, the use or non-use of and discernment of information. Again, I told you, this is my superpower. It is about the interpretation of information, how to use information or not use information and to discern which information is which, when, where, why, and how. That's what insight is about. 
when you have insight, not only do you have the information, which everyone has access to, we all got information, but not everybody has insight. So when you have insight, not only do you have information, but you know which information you need, when to use that information, when not to use it, how much of it to use, and you understand why you're using it. All of that happens when you have insight. See, if you don't have insight, you can't do any of these things. And when you have those things, that means you can explain what you know, the information you have, you can explain it to another person and help them have the same level of understanding that you have when you have insight. And that's, that's also a little bit of communication skill as well. Insight can be an inside job just in the form of the way that you think. Changing your thinking is a form of insight. Because what insight often is is a form of asking yourself a different question or a different set of questions, which causes you to think in a different way. When you think differently, then you are equipped to behave differently. And that can lead to different outcomes. So insight can be an inside job and a form of the way you think. But the value of insight multiplies when you have communication skills to go with it, because now you can transfer your insight to others. Now, you can get insight, again, just with yourself. But your, the value of your insight multiplies when you can give it to other people. Now you can help other people get better and improve and get the outcomes that they want. And you can charge money for that. You have a business there when you have both skills, insight and communication. Which means you can share that insight. As I just said, they can get to the same level as you or at least advance the way that they need to advance in your areas of insight, whatever your insight happens to be. This is what I do as a coach, is what I do as a consultant. I share insights. And my insights are based on my deep understanding of certain principles of certain aspects of life. Now, I don't have deep understanding of every aspect, but the aspects in which I do have expertise, I can not only understand it, I can explain it, I can discern when other people have challenges and I can help them figure them out. So when it comes to things like mindset, strategy, systems, accountability, human nature, communication, leadership, performance, I have deep knowledge of the principles of these areas and I can help people understand maybe what's going wrong and what needs to happen in order to change their circumstances. This is what I offer. This is what I bring to the table. And this is why I work with so many people in so many different industries, many of which I have never personally worked in myself because my insights are based on principles. They're not based on this particular industry or this particular job. They're based on principles, which means they apply everywhere. A principle applies everywhere. Okay, so whenever you hear me mention a principle, that principle applies everywhere. There are no exceptions to a principle. There are exceptions to strategies, there are exceptions to tactics, there are exceptions to ideas. There is no exception to a principle. So when you understand certain principles on a basic level, you can take those principles with you to different places. And not only do I understand them, I can explain them and I can teach them to other people and I can teach other people to apply them in areas in which they are experts, or at least they have some experience, even if I have no experience. Because again, the principles are universal. And as long as you can communicate them, someone else can use them in any other space that they want to use them. And this is what I did in transitioning from being an athlete or having an athlete audience to having an entrepreneur and professional audience was that I took the principles that worked in sports. I translated them over to the outside of sports world and the principles still apply. The principles haven't changed. Those four things I'll tell you about when I open the show, discipline, confidence, mental toughness, personal initiative. I was telling those same things to basketball players in 2009. I'm telling it to you all now. The principles haven't changed. And the way that I talk about them, I could talk to athletes the same way I'm talking to you. Same things. They probably don't have the patience. They probably wouldn't have the patience to sit and listen to this like you all do. But the principles still apply whether they listen to it or not. Not understanding something doesn't mean it doesn't apply to you. So I explained the concept of discernment in episode number 1431. Discernment is about solving the unsolved mysteries of a situation. In other words, looking into a situation and seeing what's really going on as opposed to what's being displayed to you or being told to you. That's what discernment is about. Can you find out what's really happening here as opposed to what you're being told is happening? And discernment is a skill. Not everyone has a skill, but it is a skill and it can be developed with the right experience. People with high level of insight tend to be very sharp discerners. Usually you see both at the same time. Someone who is very insightful usually can discern what's happening. Not 100%, but often. These two abilities go together because your ability to discern things serves the insights that you can share. Because when I can see what's really going on, then it's easier for me to communicate with you in a way that will produce a breakthrough for you or an aha moment for you to say, oh, okay, now I get it. Now to explain it that way. Point number three. Today's topic, once again, is why you need insight and not information. Number three, 
The paradox of information is that the more people have access to, the slower we move. If you really think about it, the more information we have access to, we actually move more slowly. We accomplish less, and often our work results get worse when we have more information. Why is this? Because of this concept of being a pig, professional information gatherer. I have friends who are professional information gatherers. They will go and download every free handout that comes out. They will sign up for everyone's free challenge. They will watch every live stream, read every book, watch every YouTube video, listen to every podcast episode about a certain topic, yet they can never show me something tangible they have actually accomplished from all the information gathering that they have done. Because the more information you gather, now you got to consume more, now you got to look at more, you got to listen to more, you got to study more stuff. And then eventually, the more information you gather, folks, especially when you're a pig, a professional information gatherer, eventually you're going to gather information that is in conflict with other information that you've already gathered. And then you're going to become more confused because you don't know what or who to listen to and what to ignore because you're just gathering information. And gathering information is not a good business to be in. I would suggest you not be in that business. Information gathering usually, again, slows down a person's progress, rather speeding it up because now we have to go through and make sense of this new information that we just added into our process. 25 years ago, we were excited about how all this information would speed up life, right? They had this thing called the information superhighway that they were pitching. Information superhighway is going to speed up life and thought and progress and all of this stuff because we're going to have access to all this information. Now, it actually has done that for life in general. Life does move faster now than it did 30 years ago. However, for the individual person, it's actually slowed us down. Even though we may feel like we're going faster, we're actually going slower. The more information we get, the more confused we become because we don't know where to begin and where to end. This is where someone like myself comes in to help. Let's look at all this information you have. Let's figure out what matters the most and let's focus on that. Point number four. Today's top, <clears throat> excuse me, topic once again is why you need insight, not information. Number four. My superpower is insight. I told you that. Long before the recording of this episode, you've heard me talk about how my number one skill is breaking things down and putting them back together. This is my, not my first time saying that phrase. That is a form of insight. I can take a bunch of information, break it down, discern what is important for the particular situation at hand, and put it back together in such a way that you'll get the pieces that you need and the stuff that you need to apply while leaving everything else on the cutting room floor. What that means is I'm giving you the pieces that you will need in order to achieve your outcome, not overloading you with a bunch of information just to say that I did it or so you can say you did it or just so you can say that you have it. This is what, again, professional information gatherer, that's what they do. They gather information just so they can say that they have the information as if that means anything, means nothing. It's what did you apply? That's the question, not what you have. What did you apply? And people end up going wrong by gathering a whole bunch of information, but then not buckling down and first of all consuming it secondly internalizing it third applying it see most people don't do those three things they go gather but they don't do anything else consume internalize apply we'll do a whole episode just on that alone uh, it's coming soon here on this feed i can explain and again as i said this is where people go wrong now for me I can explain the principles behind the insights that I give people. If I give you an insight, I can explain your principle behind the insight. Why am I telling you that instead of telling you this other thing? I can only tell you what to do and how to do it. I can help you understand why I'm telling you what I'm telling you. This is my value as a coach because what happens is not only am I telling you something, I'm also teaching you at the same time. So you are now getting that knowledge transferred. The knowledge that I have is being transferred to you, which is going to make you more valuable in the long run. I just up your level of value by just being around me because I'm going to give you insights. Yeah, not just what to do, but why to do it. And as long as you internalize it, then now you have the knowledge. That's why I can work with anyone in any industry because I don't need to be an expert at what you do in order to explain a principle to you and tell you how that principle would apply in your business. Again, this is not something that you just wake up with this ability. This is something that can be practiced, but I have it. And I'm explaining this. I want y'all, you all to understand where I'm coming from, what I do. Remember that principles are universal and they are transferable between disciplines. A principle is universal and transferable between disciplines. You know how I like to say early is on time, when time is late and late is forgotten? Well, the first place I ever heard that was at a network marketing meeting when I was in college. They, the speakers would say that. Be early, early is on time, when time is late, late is forgotten. Actually, before that, it was before that. In college, one of my coaches 
he would say that. He would tell us we always had to be early for practice. So if practice was at 4 o'clock, you had to be on the court and ready to practice at 3.45. If you walked in the gym at 3.55, technically five minutes before practice, you were late because early is on time. And on time is late. So if you showed up at 3.55, you were actually 10 minutes late because we were supposed to be here 15 minutes early. And I took those principles that I got from that network marketing experience and from my basketball experience with that coach. And I transferred those over to what I talk about to this day. Because again, they're principles. This means they're universal. This means they apply on basketball. In basketball, they apply in network marketing. They apply in entrepreneurship. They apply everywhere. They apply in anything that you do. That's what a principle looks like. And this is why, again, I can work with people in any space. Principles can be transferred. So if you already have a bunch of information, and you are not sure that your application is working the right way, again, come into work with the game university, get help from me, and let's find out. Let's find out if it's right or if it's not. And we're going to make it clear whether it is a yes or a no. That said, let's recap today's class. This is why you need insight, not information. And listen to episode 1177 or more about how I made out what insight actually means. Point number one, information is free, ubiquitous, and easily accessible by everybody. You get information on Google, YouTube, AI, uh, at the worst, 20 bucks for a book. Why do people still have problems and challenges in life if we all, all we need is information, we all got access as much of it as we could possibly consume? That is a good question. I'm going to move on to point number two. Insight is about the interpretation, the use or non-use of, and discernment of information. That's what insight is about. When you have insight, you not only have information, but you know how to explain it. You can break it down. You can break it into bits and pieces so that anyone can understand it. And you can help people apply the information now that you help them understand uh, what the information is about. And again, this is a skill that not everyone has, but it can be developed with the right experience. People with high levels of insight tend to be pretty sharp in discernment. Number three, the paradox of information is that the more people have access to information, the slower they move, the less they accomplish, and often the worse their outcomes because of the slowness of their movements, because their lack of accomplishments. How are you going to have a good outcome with no accomplishments? I have friends who are professional information gatherers. They go download every free handout, sign up for every challenge, watch every live stream, read every book, watch every YouTube video, listen to every podcast that comes out, yet they can never show something tangible that they have actually accomplished from all of this information gathering they've been doing. Information gathering usually slows a person's progress rather than speeding it up. It makes you go slower because you're thinking about what to do, when to do, where to do it, because you're getting more information that is conflicting with what you thought you knew. And now somebody else says this and somebody else says that. It just slows you down because it makes you more confused. Sometimes having less information allows you to move faster. And again, life itself has sped up in general, but people are generally slower and dumber and stupider than we've ever been. Why? Because we have access to so much information. It's actually, it has passed the point of, it's past the sweet spot, so to speak. Point number four, today's topic, again, we're re reviewing today's points. My superpower is insight. Long before the recording of this episode, you have heard me talk about how my number one skill is breaking things down and putting them back together. That is the, that is a form of insight. That's my value as a coach. My value as a consultant is, again, breaking things down to not only what to do, but why, when, where, and how to do things. So principles, again, universal, transferable between disciplines. If you already have a bunch of information, yet you're not sure your application is working the right way, come into work on your game university and let me help you. I will help you. I tr and trust me, I will help you. Go to work on your game university.com. Work on your game. Dre, all.